There was a, a guy who was into drugs, he was smuggling drugs. Everything that involved guns and violence and that type of I hated every bit of it, you know. Uh, I, I would see, you know, those assholes dealing coke and stuff like that. You know, they would do transaction for, you know, at, at a kilo or whatever, you know, for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. You know, they'd, they'd be 10 guys with machine guns and I mean, what the hell? I mean, you know, get a hold of yourself. I mean, it's 20 grand. The whole purpose of it all is to transfer that in, into money in the end. So I said, well, you know, why not just simply cut across? I'll go directly to money. If you get caught, you get punished severely for it. It's a real game that you have to put, you know, everything you got into it if you want to win. So I started to research. You need paper and you need ink, you need to print somehow, you know, basic stuff. That's the extent of what I knew. You need printing presses, a well, lumber yard, Tackers. numbering machines for the serial number, color shifting ink, and measurements. And then you gotta fine tune. And if you need 171.4 embedded security fibers. You got the watermark also. All of it is, is all in the paper, so it's by far, by far the, the trickiest part of it. So if you want it you know, to be the right way, with the right properties and chemistry and all that, well, there's, there's no way you're gonna be able to bribe Crane out of you know, s selling you a spool you know, through the back doors, no chance of that happening. Crane is the only manufacturer of U.S. currency paper. Because of its composition and its strength, it has a certain feel to it. And so out in circulation, people become very accustomed to the feel of the note, uh, particularly tellers and cash handlers. So yeah, so there's the security thread you know, in, the, in the 20. It's a little harder to see there. It is fairly well known that the majority of counterfeits that are detected in circulation are detected because of the feel. If the paper doesn't feel right, then the, the person sort of stops what they're doing and, and then takes a closer look at it. I recreated the exact recipe of the banknote paper that they use at Crane with the right thickness and the right fibers and the right ratio and the right chemistry properties. I somehow needed to find somewhere who would brew up this recipe that I have and make it for me. I had to come up with a story that would make sense for me to order such type of paper. So I created this fake company, Keystone Investment and Trading Company. It needed to sound big and large and, you know, this huge firm. The premise was to come out with our own bonds to put on the market. The closer the currency, the more secure it would be. You don't know for a fact that they didn't call police. You have to work like they are on you 100% of the time. You can't just call it in and go over there, pick it up, and then they follow you home, and then boom. Like a moron, you get caught, you can't do that. So you have to assume that the pallets are rigged and we're gonna have helicopters on it. Everybody's watching with binoculars from afar. 
you have to hire a constant flow of new people so the guy you sent over there cannot know who you are. He cannot know anything about the project. It can't be someone who's been working with you because he's going to have a lot to say. So you got to assume he's going to be tail leaving from there. So you got to stop that. I had set up, you know, this plan where I put a second guy to follow the truck with a car. It was only one lane wide, right at the entrance of uh, the speedway. And when this one lane bottleneck, he was to stop his car as though, you know, it got stuck. It wasn't working anymore. So he got paid to get stuck there for 20 minutes, you know, to give the truck time to escape. I had the truck brought to a parking lot then I put surveillance on it, you know, 24 hours a day for three days. Since nothing happened, then I rented a second truck and I had him meet the first truck over there. He opened up every box and he switched the truck and pallets. So then I knew the pallets had nothing, the box had nothing, the truck had nothing, was everything brand new. I was confident that uh, we had nobody on us. So from then he went straight from there to the print shop and then I locked the door. It was never to go out again as plain paper. You gotta keep quiet and you know make sure the appearances look legit. Otherwise, your neighbor will rat. It's the uh, building right there, the white and green right there. There's no one to bother us here. You can do your thing. It's totally confined. It's remote. Who could know that anything was happening in here? Really, it, it, it's almost impossible. There's nobody. There's nobody. I was selling it at thirty percent. Every million would sell for 300000 One day, a new customer was coming on board. So it turned out that the guy was an, 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 an undercover uh, RCMP officer. And the next day, at 5 o'clock, there were a swarm of them uh, who knocked on my door, handcuffed all of us, and uh, hauled us out. To them, they came in, they said, well, it's, it's just a million in there. So to them, you know, it was, it was, it was a big thing at the time. So they, they, were, they were quite happy about it, but it was, you know, for just the, 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 the first sample orders that we had with this new, uh, this new customer. So I knew that what they would obviously want to get to would be the print shop and the rest of the money. They offered me 60 years, because it's three count of 20 years, because I had, you know, production, possession, and distribution. That's when I told my lawyer, I got to talk to you about something. If I had 200 million, could, could you do something with it? Could you could resolve that? What do you mean if you got done? Well, I have 200 million. They were that they hadn't succeeded at arresting me, obviously, but uh, I tried my best to make sure that this didn't happen and uh, I planned well. That was it, the police left and uh, I, I, was, I was a free man. I'm not quite sure exactly how they found it but they managed to find a link to the paper mill. So they went to the paper mill and asked for the paper quantity to was shipped. So they, they, had, they had the exact weight of, of you know, what they had shipped. So they knew you know, that it had X number of sheet, with X amount per sheet. So you know, they knew the total. So they knew, they knew all of what, what, what was missing. I counterfeited 250 million. I'm the uh, world's greatest counterfeiter. As funny as it sounds, I'm fighting to stop counterfeiting now for, for the last, you know, three, four years.
what I could say as a, a possible clue, if you were to plan a vacation somehow, I would suggest that you go to St. Michael's Church. It's in uh, Kansas, and you go to the, uh, the front pew. There's a, a hollow leg in there. Some of your answers might be there. Some of it might be there.